Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Shane here with Polo Display Gaming for another episode of Comic Book Geeks. Episode Comic Book Geeks, episode two. I'm joined with Jeff. Mike's somewhere else right now, and he's about to give you the rundown for the news. Hello. Uh, gosh, this feels super weird. So I'm gonna be real quick because uh, I don't like I don't like podcasts, and I certainly don't like doing podcasts alone. Um, so. There's some material I want to talk about when um, when I'm back on the show with the boys. Uh, hopefully next week uh, we'll get back on track. I know, Shane, you're off at some concert and Jeffrey is somewhere and I'm somewhere. Uh, but when we come back, I do want to talk about this artist here, Pablo Villalobos. Uh, he is probably the most recent artist uh, fascination that I have. Um, but yeah, uh, we were talking a little bit about that in a text. And uh, again, I don't want to sit here and talk to myself about this. So, um, and let me just go through, because I've only read one of my books I got this week. But, and this is the one. This one goes to the top of the pile. Batman Dark Age uh, is just a great, great read. It's um, Mark Russell, Mike Allred. I got this variant here too. Um, but man, there's some great lines in there. Big, fat, meaty book. I uh, love Mike Allred's art, especially when he's drawing stuff I care about. Sometimes he, he gets involved in books. Uh, I don't really care about the characters or the subject matter he's drawing about, but this is Batman, early day Batman, doing some really cool, interesting, new take shit that makes a lot of sense as to why um, Bruce Wayne likes to be only out at night, how he knows his covert operation kind of stuff. I also got Detective. Um, these I will probably never read, but I really like the covers. Some Peach Momoko goodness, uh, Spider-Man. Um, this, I heard, is missing pages. So, Jeffrey, make sure you um, get the reorder uh, fixing thing on this because it's missing 16 pages for a $10 Daredevil book. So, so many pages they didn't know they were missing pages. And then uh, Conan, my boy. Uh, but this is my favorite of the... There's like four covers. E.M. Gist did this one. I've not read... The only one I've read is Batman Dark Ages. So, that said, uh, we're at the end of April, coming into May. Um, we got some big stuff happening in May. You'll notice I'm wearing my Fall Guy shirt. That's on purpose. Comes out May 3rd. Make sure you go check it out. Uh, I would say for the last 17 years or so. Um, the first weekend of May historically kicks off with a Marvel movie. So we got Deadpool in July, but for now this will do. And I've seen it already. It's great. It does more than uh, take the place of a Marvel. And it's also kind of nice to mix it up a little bit. And we'll throw it back 80s style with some Colt Seavers uh, with my boy Ryan Gosling. Uh, and that same weekend, which happens to be this weekend... It's free comic day, first Saturday in May. Where are you going to be? Well, there's a couple really good spots I'm going to tell you about real quick. Um, I'm going to be at Golden Apple with, with uh, Stephanie, my wife, and my son, Graham. And uh, unfortunately, Guy, my friend, can't make it this weekend. But we'll be there. We'll be uh, helping Ryan and, and the fine staff at Golden Apple uh, work the line, get people their books. Uh, and there's some really cool creators there. I think we got... Jackson Lansing and and some people from Magma Comics. Derek Robertson's going to be there. And I think a handful of other people there. So uh, Golden Apple on Melrose Boulevard. Saturday, I think, from 11 to 5. Uh, and if you are up in the Ventura area, I would check out Arsenal Comics and Games. If you're enjoying the uh, X-Men 97 animated series, uh, a lot of the voice actors... Including, I know, Rogue is there, as well as Larry Houston, who has directed every single episode of the X-Men back from 92 to 96. And a bunch of other cast members and people that worked on the show are going to be there. He's got a lot of comic creators there, too. And then uh, out in, I believe it's Rancho Cucamonga, Four Color Fantasies, you've got David Mack, you've got Danny Mickey, you've got Norm Ratman, you've got Kurt Cushion. A lot of really cool creators are out in Rancho Cucamonga on free comic day. So three great locations, Golden Apple, uh, Four Color Fantasies, 
and Arsenal Comics and Games are the three spots that if I could easily travel around California and gas wasn't six dollars a gallon you'd find me at all three but I'll be a golden apple and hopefully uh, I'll see some of y'all there that said uh, we'll be in a more normal format next week uh, with comic book geeks this is Mike signing off peace Jeff how you doing today oh I'm doing pretty good how are you doing Oh, you know, I'm all right. I'm in Vegas right now, so hence my uh, kind of fun oh, background. That was fun. What are you doing in Vegas? <laughs> oh, I was at a show. I was at uh, Stick to the World, a big heavy metal festival. Saw so House of Chains, like System of Down, Primus, stuff like that. It's a good yeah. time. Pretty, pretty tired. How's your weekend been? How's this <laughs> month of comics been for you? Well, not that eventful. Uh, I sat at home and did a bunch of uh, computer art for some uh, products we're going to release soon. Uh, but my kids oh, were out yeah. of the house, so I got to just sit and uh, have my, my my shows, my stories on, and just get some work done in front of the computer. Nice. Nice. Real quick, have you been watching uh, X-Men, though? Uh, I watch X-Men on Wednesday morning before I go over to the yep. comic book store because... Uh, I can't can't walk in there without full knowledge of what's going on because it will certainly be spoiled. And also, I just like to be able to be part of the conversation. Hell yeah, I just, uh, real quick before we get into our books that we've been reading, I just want to talk on that because that's our main topic this month. Or, yeah, um, I think it's going really well. I think the last episode was pretty crazy. You got Sinister and then I don't know who the other guy is. Who who is Sinister his, working with? His name with? is Bastion. Bastion, like that's a okay. humanoid version of Nimrod, the uh, the Sentinel from the future. Uh, uh, if you've been a super eagle-eyed nerd like me, he has appeared once in this season in one of the photos on Forge's wall. Forge uh, is standing oh. next to Bastion. And so I was like, I saw that, and that set up big red flags. I was like, ooh, Bastion is, is going to be in this. Um, and okay. that, was, that was right. So we're going to see going to see him, and I'm sure his origin will be slightly different in the show. So I bet we'll get an explanation of that in the, in the next episode or two. And uh, there goes, there's what... Two episodes There's three left, more right? left, and it's parts three. one, two, and three. So it's like one oh. big movie to end the, the the season. Yeah, we'll see what happens because I know Cable's back, and now you know Cyclops knows that Cable's his son and everything. And yeah, so we'll see it's how that all goes. It's funny because if you actually go back, every time Cable shows up, he does something awful to Jean Grey in the original <laughs> series. Like he shoots her, he drops a rock on her, like to get her out of the way. But it's extra funny now when it's like, "You're not my mom," <laughs> <laughs> right? So we'll see how that all goes. But just want to touch base on X Men. I think it's really great right now. Very violent cartoon. I don't think this one's for kids though. Really? No, I think <laughs> it's for for the kids who watch watched it as a kid. Yeah, because <laughs> that was me. And I, I lived in rural California, a place so rural that Fox wasn't a broadcast network. Like, you wouldn't come in on your antenna. You had to buy cable to get Fox. So I had to oh, go wow. over to my friend Mikey Hendrix's house to watch X-Men on Saturday morning. And I remember the one where the juggernaut first showed up and just losing my shit. This is such a good episode. I love juggernaut. Uh, juggernaut's oh, yeah. going to be uh, a member of the X-Men going forward. And I'm very excited to see that because I've always really liked the juggernaut redemption side of that story. In the new uh, comic? In the post for Cohen, uh, they're calling it the From the Ashes era. Oh, okay, that's not uh, an ultimate X Men, though, right? Not ultimate, no. not ultimate. Yeah. So, mainline 616 in the Jed McKay oh, okay. Uncanny X Men? I forgot which adjective it is, but it's the Jed McKay one. It has Cyclops, Quentin Choir, uh, Magneto, Juggernaut, I think Psylocke, 
and one or two others, but that's like the main crew for that particular title. And I just, I love seeing Juggernaut on that road to redemption because also we've gotten so many stories where it's like Professor X is not as much of a good guy as you thought he was. So that allows you to rethink the idea that his evil stepbrother is a bad guy. Because it's like, maybe he saw a little bit of what was coming down the road with how bad Professor X can be. And just also, I really love a good redemption arc in comic books. Uh, it's something that most fiction usually doesn't do. They'll have the good guy become the bad guy. Like that'll happen with some, but not the other, although not you know, necessarily in comics. That almost never happens in comics. But they, yeah, <laughs> will have the bad guy become the good guy every once in a while. And I usually really like it when it happens. Like I love this the era where Sandman was a good guy. Um, uh, Spider Woman has an amazing one of my favorite stories of all time, where the armadillo becomes a good guy, and like she trains him to be a good guy. It's just fantastic comic book. Uh, so there's there's quite a few I can think of, and I'm hoping that this uh, Juggernaut is a good guy kind of uh, pays off. I hope it's good. Well, yeah, real back going real quick going back to the X Men TV show. Yeah, Rogue, she kind of was losing her stuff last episode. You know, going yes. on this whole revenge spree, and then she I, uh, I, throws a trash off a building. She <laughs> drops him, not throws him, but well, uh, she go. throws. <laughs> she throws Captain America's shield yes, into a mountain, which was pretty yeah. great. <laughs> that was funny. Um, Go get it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I liked, because sometimes I feel like Captain America gets to be too much of a Boy Scout and, like, I'm the good guy all the time kind of thing. When it's like, no, sometimes he sides with the government and the government is not always the good guy. And yeah. seeing, like, the... <clears throat> uh, the the implicit racism in telling the oppressed group to wait and like that even captain america tried to pull that bs and thought that the oppressed would just be like okay we'll wait for you because you're captain america i thought it was a great use of the character and not overdoing it just having him there for a little bit and showing that there's multiple sides to captain america i like that a lot yeah. Like there's, there's a lot of memes going around that we can maybe find some and put them up on the screen where yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Uh, bam, 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 bam. Put yeah, them up, the, put them up. The Avengers, it's it's like a, one of the two picture memes. It's the Avengers and then the Avengers when they're in the X-Men books. <laughs> and the, when they're in the X-Men books, they are always like all evil and, and awful. <laughs> And there's pretty and much like, that that has been quite a few books where it's like the Avengers are, are, are super selfless. But then when they show up in the X-Men, they're like, no, we've got to uh, take your children. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not very nice to the X-Men. But moving on, what books have you been reading this month? Yeah. I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but until Marvel and DC put out something better, I'm going to just keep talking about Ultimate Spider-Man and Transformers and Batman Dark Age. It's the one, two, three from Marvel, DC, and Image, and they're just frequently, consistently the best comic books yeah. coming out. G.I. Joe is also very good, but to me, Transformers is, is on the next, the next level. Oh, yeah. I think we're on what I, I didn't read that this is the newest this is the newest one. oh this is the newest one okay so I do but that means that, that a new one is due very soon yeah. Um, yeah and just to to praise to praise uh Transformers yet again they just are doing the best fight scenes in any comic book in any comic book um they they add so much yeah, just... to the story by having these amazing fight scenes. This one is a knockdown drag out fight scene between Starscream and Soundwave. And Soundwave is my guy, as you might be able to tell. <laughs> Here's the Soundwave shelf. Oh yeah, you like Soundwave a little bit. <laughs> and then there's Soundwave shelf part two. Nice. That's just about nice. every version of him where he transforms into a cassette uh, player. <laughs> 
Were there any ones that they, I, if I remember, was there ones that actually could play music? I, I could get them out, but they're uh, very carefully displayed. I have two that are radios that are working radios. Wow. I can still get radio stations right now. Um, That's and, cool. And then there's one. Yeah, take pictures oh, later. I forgot, and then to, show, I forgot to show the, the, the third shelf of sound waves. Uh, this guy right here is an MP3 oh, player. No, I'm, I'm looking at something else. You're showing me the clock. How about ah. this? Take a picture. Take a picture of them later. Yeah. Talk about which ones you have. <laughs> It'd be easier showing it on camera because you were just pointed at the clock. <laughs> uh, so, back, which ones back, are they? Then just let me answer your question smoothly. Yeah, I have quite a few that can play music. I have two that are working radios. And I have one that is an MP3 player, where if you put a little mini SD card from old cameras into it with music, it'll play the music. That's awesome. I didn't know there was like the ones. I knew there was ones that actually worked. I didn't know there was ones that take SD cards and stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That must have been a later iteration, obviously. But For sure. That wow. was uh, mid-2000s when they started doing like the masterpiece lines, which were going back to the old designs, but then doing them up with all of the modern technology they have to build Transformers now. It's uh, pretty amazing how cool the action figures are for Transformers nowadays. Hell yeah, I've seen some really intricate ones. They get insane now. Some of them are really it's expensive. Something I just too, don't I'm bother like... transforming because um, I'm not going to be able to get this back in. So they live as the robot forever now. <laughs> Well, then, then some of these are so expensive. These are not kids' toys anymore. <laughs> no. But, uh, I, there's certain ones that my daughter can play with and certain ones she can't play with. <laughs> so, going on with Transformers, how do you like it so far? Still firing on it's, all cylinders? It just is. It just is. I keep thinking, okay, there's going to be a down, a down episode. There's going to be an issue that's not great. And it just keeps not happening. There keeps being only great issues over and over and over again. Like I said, it ha it just has the best fight scenes of any comic book that I'm reading. Just any comic book by a wide margin. Um, the last episode, the last issue before this one was a big knockdown dragout fight between Optimus Prime and Devastator, and it was just unlike any fight scene I'd ever seen in a comic book. And it has the literal best sound effect in the history of comic books I'm, yeah, like I'm a fan of sound effects I will pay attention yep. to sound effects and this is the best one that's ever been done that was in issue six and now issue seven is the the, the Decepticons kind of licking their wounds after mm -hmm. being beaten by Optimus and there is a challenge of leadership from Soundwave to Starscream yep. and it is a uh, uh, gory fight, despite the fact that we're talking about robots. About robots. That's what I was going to say. I'm looking at it again right now. I'll have some images popping up so everybody can see. I tried putting up that one page. Don't know how it is, but there's a lot of chomp, slam, boom, chow, choom. Like, I love the sound effects, like you were saying. And, like, Starscream's, uh, I mean, yeah, sound waves tearing Starscream apart. <laughs> like, I'm like, jeez. Yeah, no, he, he's just, oh. Soundwave is so dope, and to see him just fully realize uh, his potential is so exciting for me. And uh, and they keep dropping little hints about the other characters. And uh, it's just, it just yeah, keeps it being is. badass and fun and uh, a great, while it's a great love letter to the, the nerds of the 80s like me, it's also just a really good comic book. Like they've got, they're telling really great stories about the the horror of war and how trauma affects different people differently. Because like there's a, a, an Autobot that's been traumatized by like the murder of his clan, and he can't bring himself to to shoot an unarmed Decepticon. And then one of the other, the human that's been hurt by these Decepticons is mad at him for showing weakness in her mind and just showing the difference 
the different way that trauma affects different people, that it paralyzes some people, that it angers some people, uh, and that it inspires some people. There's, there's a million different reactions and they really have all of them in this book. Uh, and yeah, because that's a, just another reason why I think it's just so special is, oh, it's got great fight scenes. It's got great characterization. And like you can see some of the road that the characters are going down and you're like, no, don't go down that road. But they're going to go down that road. And, yeah. And I, I don't know. I completely agree. It's really good right now. Even just with her, she's like shooting the M16 and then like talking to oh, what's her name again? RC is the robot. RC. Yes, 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 yes. RC. Oh, yeah. I just saw it right there. And then she's just like, I wish I wasn't so good at killing. <laughs> yeah. And then basically the chick's like, yeah, cool story. Like after she just tells this whole trauma yeah. to her. It's just a like, cool story. I don't care. I'm going to kill yeah. all these robots. Mm -hmm. You know? So transform. Yeah. Just. He like the commander is awesome. I, I just love yeah. how. <laughs> it's like really brutal and violent and like Coach Commander just doesn't care. He's like, I need to get this mission done. We tortured um, the last issue and now there's what? A few remnants there's one of more that. issue of Cobra. Duke is over. Mm -hmm. And then that's going to launch into Scarlet and Destro. Yeah, because Duke's escaping with her from the prison, right? Right now. Uh, you're you're about an Scarlet. issue or two behind, and that's the okay. Baroness, not Scarlet. Baroness, yeah, that's right. So I didn't bring that one. Yeah, I'm only caught up on Cobra Commander right now. So yeah, Co uh, Cobra on? Commander, I think, is the funner one with uh, all the bad I, guys. I like it. I like it more because Cobra Commander is just a bad guy to even bad guys. You like, it? yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is pretty funny. So, but I think it's moving on well. I think I'm having a fun time with the book. Uh, incredibly violent. Uh, he's, you know, fighting swamp people and everything after they tortured yeah. him. But he did not care. He did not flinch. And, and then, then he, there was... he plays them so well. It's, mm -hmm. it's good psychological action, too. Uh, it's uh, just that classic scene where even though tied up, the guy can get the, the people who are winning to fight amongst themselves seen it done before but it's just it's it's a it's a fun little take on that and i love i love seeing the origin of the bad guys because in the original gi joe were just kind of dropped in mm -hmm. and gi joe is this big covert task force in the government and cobra is this, this giant secret organization that has shit all over the world and it, so it's kind of cool i think to see how that stuff comes to be. And uh, as, especially for the bad guys, because for the good guys, it's just kind of a bunch of good guys get together and they want to do good stuff together. But for bad guys to team up, something crazy usually has to happen. And so getting to see that crazy stuff happen. Uh, I've, so I've been really enjoying the, the Cobra origin story, just a little bit more than the GI Joe origin story. Yeah, same here. So Cobra Commander's good, and then uh, you've been reading Batman Dark Age? That's a book Batman. I have not read yet. Oh, it's just... We talked about it last month, mm -hmm. and it was something special last month, and it continues that... Uh, down that road of being unlike any Batman story I have ever read. Um, it's a new, or new telling of the origin of Batman, and even though that has been done a hundred times, these first two issues have just been mind blowing with with the new uh, way in which they have done the origin story of Batman. It's been just so good and so enjoyable and has made me just sit on the edge of my seat waiting for where it's going to go next. Even though it's the origin of Batman, I've seen this, but they're doing it in such a way where I'm like, oh, that's new. Oh, that's new, but it makes sense. And it's like, oh, that's perfect. That's what that's what he would do, and then like, oh, that's why he did that, and, and, and just and it's it's a fun ride. It's so fun. I can't wait for for the trade to come out because I'm definitely gonna put this on my short list of, of Batman books. If the first two issues are 
are any indication, if it keeps up that quality, it's going to be on my short list of best Batman books ever. It's really It's really only good. on what, issue two or three now? Two just dropped this week. Two. Okay, got it. Got it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try to, I'll just pick up the trade to read that. But again, like, mm-hmm. you know, you and Mike were talking about it's him, like, going through this whole party phase and everything, because what, what do you expect when he inherits all that money? He's going to do all that. Yeah. Instead of going it's, to train with ninjas right away. Mm-hmm. But then in the second issue, we get to the ninja training. But it Oh, now he's sense. training with ninjas? <laughs> but it makes sense how he gets there. Um, how does he get I there? I don't think it's too much of a spoiler. No. Like he get, yeah. Uh, be, because I feel like people aren't going to believe me when I say how different it is. So I'm going to drop a couple of story points to, to get people to, to listen. Uh, yeah. In the first issue, it shows Bruce Wayne just kind of out there partying nonstop, paying off any policemen who come to arrest him and just gets dropped off at home when he's done out wrecking shit as, a, as an angry teenager. But eventually, the guys that are after the Wayne fortune get to the police before he does, and he's arrested and he's put in jail. So Bruce is in jail at the beginning of issue two. And he's offered something that a lot of young men were offered in the 70s, and that is a commuted jail sentence if you go and serve in Vietnam. And so then he goes over to Vietnam and then he's sent to a special off books uh, group that's run by Raj Al Ghul, and it's it's for um, people who need to disappear within their own lives. So, like Bruce Wayne knows he needs to disappear, so he's okay at being in this group. And you get to see Oliver Queen as one of the other members really? of the. Of, the green uh, arrow? Of the blue. <laughs> and then you see Batman gets kicked out of the group because he won't kill uh, a captured prisoner. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then he goes to sleep. And when he wakes up, all of his uh, compadres are gone and Ra's is gone and just... Uh, with an arrow stuck through it is his dismissal papers so that he can go home. And so he gets all this amazing training from Raish, but he betrays Raish by not killing this unarmed civilian, or not civilian, but this unarmed prisoner of war. And then he gets home and he still has to deal with all these people who are trying to kill him to get to Wing Enterprises' money. And he gets to use all of that stuff that he was taught in the field of war as Batman. And it's just really cool. Like, like I said, it's a bunch of twists that you've never seen in the origin of Batman. And I'm just loving it. It's fantastic. So sum it up real quick. You got to go from partying to (laughs) Vietnam so do you think this is going to be a more violent Batman? No, not necessarily, because it's also about same, learning that same lesson that Batman learns, and that that you you can't if you take life, then that is all you're going to do. And okay. yeah. so he he knows that that's not how he wants to be, and he he can't quite articulate why that's why he wants to be that way. And it's not like this big moralizing speech. It's more like he just, he knows that something inside him is telling him that that's wrong. And I I think that him kind of developing that, that rule and developing in that way is really cool. And to, to bring it back to trauma, it's how he's responding to the trauma of his parents being murdered. Because also in this one, I don't believe he witnesses it. They're out and mm. about, and he stayed home. And that, and he was supposed to be there. Got so it. That's because the oh, the whole Wayne family was supposed to be murdered, so that the, basically the board of Wayne Enterprises can get all of control of all the money. And so it's got this little 
um, have and have nots back and forth that is in some Batmans, but not all Batman. And so you get to see a little bit of political intrigue, socioeconomic discussions about like, what's the best way for Bruce Wayne to use his money to, to solve some of these problems uh, and that kind of thing. And it's, it's cool. It's so well done. It's so, it's touching on everything. And I cannot wait for the next issue to come out. Nice. Uh, I really want to read it. Sounds great. Uh, to wrap up our comics we've been reading, Ultimate Spider-Man, how do you think that's going? I believe I'm actually a little bit behind. I'm on, I have two and three right Ultimate here. Ultimate Spider-Man just keeps yeah. plugging along and being awesome. Like, it's very much Ultimate Peter Parker right now, mm -hmm. but I don't mind that at all. It's It's so nice to see Peter Parker in a loving relationship with Mary Jane uh, and it's just so refreshing and with Ultimate Spider-Man outselling Amazing Spider-Man I think the fans are, are telling Marvel that this is what we wanted all along we wanted them together we don't want a perpetually single loser Peter, <laughs> Peter Parker yeah. and like this one is very interesting because it's like a dinner date between Peter and MJ and Norman and Gwen because in this world where Peter Parker doesn't become Spider-Man he doesn't meet Gwen he doesn't date Gwen she just stays with Norman who she was dating in the first appearance and so they stay together and her and Norman run like Oscorp so they're like billionaires and so you can see like their personalities and how they're different than Mary Jane and Peter who are not billionaires, not running in a billionaire corporation. And you can see how they just kind of view the world differently. And that's just really cool. And, and but also Green Goblin is a good guy in it. That's what I was going to say. It's, it's he's a good guy because he's fighting what bullseye right now in issue yeah. three. That's where mm -hmm. I'm at. Because I'm just yeah. like, oh, yeah, <laughs> Green Goblin's a good guy now. Yep. Because it so doesn't have. Cool. Yeah. It doesn't have any of that early, the the early setup of mm -hmm. these villains. Like the, the maker kind of prevented everybody from getting powers. So not just Peter doesn't have his powers, but his villains don't have their powers either. And they are being introduced slowly but surely. And uh, we know from previews, we're going to get Doc Ock in the next one, in the next volume. And we'll see if, uh, you know, Doc Ock's a good guy, maybe. That'd be kind of cool, too. Well, he's just he's just a scientist right now, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. before he goes crazy. I mean, yeah. Wilson Fisk, Kingpin, he owns the Daily Bugle, which mm -hmm. I thought was kind of funny in this one. And then, what, Jameson and Uncle Ben are going to go start their own paper right now and everything. Yes, so. they are starting their own <clears throat> because they don't want to be owned by Wilson Fisk. So they're starting their own uh, online news outlet, which is, a, I, I thought, a great way to update those characters and have them kind of coming along for the ride of this whole universe and how different it is from our 616 universe. I like this universe better. I think it's more yeah. fun. It's been interesting. Far, it's been a lot more fun. And uh, there's a the free comic book day book has a preview of the Ultimates. And that one looks like it's going to be pretty dang fun, too, with, uh, like, these characters who don't necessarily get along in the same way that the Avengers do on our world have to figure out how to work together. Because it's like, why would two gods, like, listen to what you have to say? Like, if there was a disagreement between you two, why would the two gods follow the the human teenager who started the group and it's like nope they wouldn't and so it's kind of going with that and that's also where they've said we're going to start seeing some of the political history of the world because uh if you've been reading ultimate invasion you can see that like the political setup in this universe is very very different than the, than our mm -hmm. traditional setup like the world is divided into like these seven groups and like the history of the United States is not the same. 
and like M- M- Moon Knight uh, rules Africa except for Wakanda and all kinds of a very different political intrigue stuff is is part of this new universe and so I'm excited to see that kind of unfold and it sounds like it's going to unfold over an ultimates and ultimate spider is going to keep on being this really small view of Peter Parker and his family which is just refreshing to to read for after so many years just not seeing Peter be happy that, that's what I was going to say. There's so many of these ultimate books. Like, there's going to have to be some kind of main line bringing them all together, right? So, ultimates. Ultimates, except I don't think, like, Spider-Man or the X-Men are going to be in that book. Mm. And that one just is going to have a more bigger view of the universe that it's taking place in. So, I think you'll see more of the world in Ultimates, whereas I think Ultimate Spider-Man is going to kind of really stick to Peter and his family. And like the people in his inner circle, and that's kind of it. And but that's good. Uh, Spider Man doesn't have to be part of the big story. We just we want a, a small Spider Man story where he's happy and married, and see how that affects his ability to be Spider Man, and also see how not having been died because of him affects his desire to be Superman. Like I think that we're in line for the death of somebody. One of these characters is going to die because that's what has to happen at the origin of Spider-Man. Like, yeah, Peter Parker's a good dude, but the thing that keeps him going back and never giving up is that guilt. And so who's going to bite it to make Spider-Man feel guilty all the time? I mean, I I can see Uncle Ben going away just because, uh, It'll be different because he had this whole relationship with him now. And then if you take Uncle Ben away, he's probably going to snap. Yeah. Uh, It certainly could be Uncle Ben. I I have a feeling like it might be... MJ? I think it might be Gwen. Oh. And then it turns Norman against her. Because we just got Peter and Happy. What we wanted. (laughs) They can't kill MJ or the kids, as far as I'm concerned. No. They can't do that. And, but if but, it is, yeah, if it is Gwen, not to make a job, sorry, if it is Gwen, then maybe that might throw Norman over the edge or something, and then he becomes exactly. his it takes Norman. Heart. It takes Norman down a path where Peter might have to stop Norman. Mm-hmm. Um, or, I'm sorry, Harry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's right. And, uh, and it could be that he's like, it could be like my, the thought that popped in my head was maybe that Harry calls him for help because Harry knows that Peter is Spider-Man and Peter says, no, I'm like busy doing a family thing. And then during that battle, Ooh. Harry dies or Gwen dies and Peter kind of sees their death as his fault because he didn't go and join Harry and whatever Harry asked him for help with we'll see i don't want to have predicted it correctly i like that it takes me to places that that i'm not thinking about it's it's a fun book um yeah so those are books that we're reading this month and i have really good time reading these uh real quick uh what is it other things uh ultimate x then just a brief on uh go read ghost machine that's really good that whole universe is splitting off into a few different books. Ghost Machine is a, a kind of done its big launch this month. Yeah. With the Ghost Machine preview is the one you showed, and then they launched Rook number one, Yiger number one, and Redcoat number one. And uh, by far, Redcoat is the best one. But I'm really enjoying all three of them. But if you make me pick, definitely going to pick Redcoat. Uh, the plot, the story is a guy who is kind of a mercenary in the 1700s and was fighting for uh, the uh, England during the Revolutionary War, uh, kind of falls into uh, like an ancient mystical ceremony where Benjamin Franklin is supposed to be made immortal but this guy stumbles in and falls into it and gets the immortal zap. And so now kind of this doofus is immortal. And so we get to see it's both in 
his origin and in uh, the modern time, but for the modern time for this universe is about 20 or 30 years in the future from now. There's been a giant war that has uh, like irradiated half of the country and he's just still out there completely invincible and just kind of falling backwards into adventures and that kind of thing. And so I'm just uh, really along for the ride on that one. Uh, Jeff Johns is writing all three of those books and he is really, really good at setting up and at giving you little teases of things where you're like, wait, what? That's a, that's a whole, that's a whole trade paperback, that one panel right there. <laughs> and he'll eventually get to that one panel and do a trade paperback on that one little moment in a, in a flashback. He's very good at setting those seeds that aren't going to pay off for a while. And that's what all of the Ghost Machine books have been doing a really good job of is dropping you into this world and not giving you all of the information right away. It's not like, here's the handbook, here's nice. every single thing that's happened to get here. It's like, no, there's a bunch of stuff where you're like, but wait, why is that? And you're like, well, you gotta read it. Um, is it like, yeah, just uh, like you said, Red Coat has immortal powers, but then he also knows a couple other people that are immortal. But then the story just keeps moving and doesn't tell you how he met those people that are immortal, how they are immortal. It just gives you this little teeny tiny taste uh the, the phrase that i like to use when i'm writing up reviews and stuff is called uh implied mythology it, it, they mention this one little thing and because of that one thing you can kind of extra extrapolate well that had to have happened then and this had to have happened then but how did that happen then uh and like um, like as an example uh, that I can just popped into my head was the TV show Lost. Um, except that it's a bad example because they didn't pay off a bunch of those things. But like, <laughs> they find this giant statue, and the statue has four toes instead of five toes. And I'm like, oh, what does that mean? That has to mean something. Does that mean that there were giants? Does that mean that there was a different race of beings in this thing? And then they just never answer it. Plus, the idea would be to answer it. And I feel like Jeff is going to answer all of those questions that he's dropping, but he's not in any rush to answer them. They're not going to be all answered in the first trade. He's really building a universe of stories, which is its own special talent. And he's really putting all of his work and effort into Ghost Machine because you notice his name is not on any DC or Marvel books anymore. He is just working on this. And that's pretty cool, too, I think. So, well, yeah, Ghost Machine, books to look forward to. Uh, I haven't read uh, The Rook yet. I should get that. I know I have Geiger. I read that. Uh, what else is coming out next month? Real quick, give us a rundown that you're excited for. Well, we've got the new G.I. Joe books, uh, Scarlet and Destro. Uh, like I said before, I'm a little bit more hooked on the villain story, so the Destro book is the one I'm most excited about. Ultimates, the the Avengers of this new Ultimate Universe, uh, looks like it's going to be a real fun ride. Um, if you haven't been reading, it's got uh, the Reed Richards of this Earth has been entrapped in Doctor Doom's armor, but we haven't seen his face, so it could be Doctor Doom, but we don't know. And so that, I mean, he, he certainly acts a bit like Doom in some of these stories. So I'm interested to see like where that goes because Dr. Doom and Mr. Fantastic and the Fantastic Four are my favorite Marvel characters. And so seeing more of them is always going to make me happy. And then, but it also has Ultimate Sif and Ultimate Thor and Ultimate Thor has been in prison for years because Ultimate Maker the kind of bad guy that started this ultimate universe made sure that all of the superheroes that could have stopped him were never created. And so like the first example is he catches Peter in that science experiment and just brushes the spider off of his arm and say, Hey, there was a spider on you. And then all of a sudden there's no Spider-Man. And so he was doing that for just a bunch of superheroes. Like he made sure that nobody found Captain America's body. So Captain America was just sitting there frozen. 
and all that kind of stuff. So he just goes around and he prevented all of the origins from happening, or he made sure they happened in a way that he could control. And that's how he came to control like the whole world. And so the Ultimates are trying to take apart this meticulously built ruling system that has taken over the world. And so it's the Ultimates kind of against everybody. And so I'm excited to see where that goes. Uh, and then, of course, more Dark Age. DC has announced that they are doing more Elseworlds books, which I think is a big home run idea. Um, especially, especially they're going back to uh, Dark Knights of Steel, which is one of my favorite comic books Ooh, last year. Yes, yes. I loved Dark Knights I of Steel. I love that. Yep. They need to release a single volume of it, though, because they have part one and two in hardcover. I'm like, no, I want one <laughs> giant one. I want one book. <laughs> and they're, but they're doing a sequel, prequel, side pool, whatever, to going back to that universe in New Elseworlds books. And I just think that anytime Marvel or DC does a book where you don't have to read a thousand Everything other else, books yeah. is a good idea on their part. So more Elseworlds is more better so please keep doing elseworlds um dc and then marvel look over there and pay attention and and see what you guys can do to do the same thing because i don't think this drowning in continuity is working uh yeah so to sum it up go read the ghost machine books rook geiger and there was the third book right with the uh, ninja lady no red coat what Redcoat, Red Geiger, Coat? and Rook. Redcoat, Geiger, and Rook. Uh, There's Ultimates. plenty others, but those are the ones yeah. that have launched. Okay. Uh, check out uh, Ultimates. Uh, the Ultimate Universe with Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, Ultimate X-Men's good, too. Um, there's all well, there's Just look at all the Ultimate books. And then look for the main line. As well as we had the Energon Universe. Uh, how's Void Rivals? Is there new Void Rivals coming out? There's been two new issues really close back to back. And okay. I, I have had a chance to read the Energon Universe free comic book day book. And oh boy. Oh, it's got good stuff in it. It's okay, so this will make come sure out. Make sure you before. go to your local yeah. comic book store. And if you only grab one free comic day book, make it the Energon Universe one. Which we're going to plug real quick. Free comic book day is May 4th. This will come out on the this is coming out tuesday what is the date for tuesday the 30th so it's going to come out in april before may starts yes yes okay this is coming out so yeah saturday, right before this saturday. yes <laughs> this saturday free comic book day look at your local comic book stores i know jeff you will be in i will be santa at monica. a book fair called y'all west in santa monica at santa monica high school yeah come check us out so if you're uh, in the area, please come up, check Jeff, uh, get your free comics. Uh, how many uh, comic free comic book days comics are there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's like 40. We, we have okay. about four of them. <laughs> okay. Okay. But um, so there's a bunch of them. Uh, I know I knew people who would just go to comic book store after comic book store that whole day. Yeah, so there's a lot of events going on. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of events going on. Pick up your free comics. Uh, go yeah. support your local comic book stores. Always. Absolutely. Please buy and something well, while you're there getting the free comic yes. books. Yes. Please pick up a book or two while you're there. So going off of that, we talked about books we were reading, books that are coming out. Let's close all of this up with our topic of the month, which is Robert Kirkman's take on uh, more books, hopefully, and IPs. Yeah. Let's see what he wants, what we want him to take, or see what he might take. What yes. would you like him to take, Jeff? So after seeing Robert Kirkman just really, really kind of have runaway success with his G.I. Joe and Transformers take, uh, I wanted to ask what other stuff do we wish Robert Kirkman would take over? And I boiled it down. I had two, I have two picks. Uh, one is the one that I think might genuinely be happening, and that is the storytelling for Magic the Gathering. Uh, that was mine and, too. It's been a, a part of my life since I was in the sixth grade, no, the fourth grade. I love Magic the Gathering. I love Magic the Gathering. I've been playing forever, and I love the stories from Magic the Gathering. I absorb them whenever I can, but they are not the comics very are terrible. 
<laughs> the, the comic books are just not good. They like, I, I, and it's kind of the same thing that was happening to the Transformers comic and the G.I. Joe comic book. I was like, I don't know where this is. So I'm not invested in this. I don't. Uh, and he managed to really hit the reset button in such a smart way on G.I. Joe and Transformers. My hope is that he could do the same thing to magic and get people who aren't magic nerds to try it out. But even if all he could do was just get magic nerds to read comics, that would be great because it's a bunch of untapped uh uh, nerds and they love nerdy things obviously and uh, having run a store I can tell you that the crossover between magic players and comic book readers was very small it's very small yeah. and so and just I, getting if you could just get the magic players to read one comic book it mm -hmm. might be the best selling comic book on the stands more than Marvel or DC even and, and so if you could do something yeah. like that that would be pretty dang special I would love to see that and like you were saying, I know back in the day, I think it was uh, IDW or no, which which publisher did it where they had IDW a card? Did it. No, they uh, had a card released with the comics. Yes. And if they were to tap into that or a I like mean, launch it, it with a special yes. edition booster, like yeah. come on. No, I mean that would be it would it would sell it would be the best selling comic book of of the month if they could get a card uh, with special art put into it. Uh, they did that for one series at IDW many, many years ago. And I don't know if it was like not a success on their end because I've talked to the people at IDW before when they like relaunched or no, Boom, Boom is doing it. When, the, when mm -hmm. Boom relaunched the Magic comic books, I'm like, you got to get a card in there, guys. You've got to get a card. And they're like, no, nope, it's not going to happen. I'm like, okay, I understand why you, but you shouldn't have just said no. You should have said, if we can't get the card, we're not going to do it. Because there's just no point. And the sales difference is, it's a thousand percent. I mean, if if it had a card of, if it just had alternate art of a common card, like card like Counterspell or, or Lightning Bolt, they're stable People cards, but they're not worth more than a quarter. Yeah. So they're not going to mess up any of their own. Yeah internal economics by printing a bunch of this card but they put a new art on it and I like the comic book art on it and then we would have sold 50 copies in our store instead of barely scraping five copies sold and, and part of that is also because they just don't have they have not done a good job of unifying all of the story like the history of the story they've been doing a decent job on the free stories that they print when the new sets come out. Whenever a new set comes out, there's usually about five to 10 chapters of, of the magic book that come out about that particular set. And they've been doing a pretty good job uh, for a couple sets in a row of that, but it's not the same as having its own little comic book out over on the side. And like, they could go back because there's a bunch of like, half told stories in the history of magic there's a bunch of like famous sets that didn't have the whole story published and it's like okay if you don't want to mess with the modern continuity of what they're doing in the cards go back and do the classics did get a, a more unified version of that story told i think there's a lot of different ways to go with it aside from just putting a card in it because putting a card in it just makes it sell because of the card and while that is smart and you've got to do that, I think you also need to find a way to tell a story that people both who, that read the, the card story, which is a small percentage of the group who plays magic. Most people don't necessarily read the story for it and turn everybody into the person who reads the story for it. So it's got to be really good, too. But you can get it in people's hands by just having that card. They're going to buy it for the card, but then they've got the comic right in their hands. Maybe they'll give it a chance. And if you can do a good job, I think it would really launch a really successful uh, comic oh, book yeah. because uh, it's like people, people outside of the world of nerds don't understand how big Magic the Gathering is. It's Hasbro's biggest license. It's more valuable to them than Transformers and G.I. Joe. It's it's their first billion dollar license, I believe, was 
what happens. And that's just that they can't figure out how to release novels, comic books that are successful. Or even games. <laughs> Except yes. like the... No, like you can even have a good Magic the Gathering video game, but there hasn't been one. I played the one where it was kind of like Diablo. It was whatever, and it kind of sucked. Yeah. But I feel well, like they should be tapping into well, all like, these things. Yes, but you know? also, like, the only way you can do a game like that is to get people to care about the characters. The only way you're going to do that is with a story that everybody reads and loves. And, that's, and, you know, I think Robert, to that point, can bring a continuity uh, to that series because, like you said, that those storylines are so diluted. They're kind of all over the place. It's hard for somebody new to pick up and get into these this lore because each set has its own lore. You have well, all yeah, these different like, planeswalkers. I mean, it's just a lot. If you're asking me what I would do, I would try to do like a, a s- almost summarized version of the whole history of magic. Like there's certainly some sets that you can skip over, but I would go all the way back to the beginning with one writer kind of in charge and massaging the continuity a little bit to make all of the pieces fit together and kind of basically catch people up because it would also be good if you can catch everybody up to get to the modern story mm-hmm. and to get people to care about that like when a new set comes out I'm more excited about the story than the cards although I'm also very freaking excited about the cards I'm just I'm an all in magic nerd and I know that you could make more of me if that story was both compelling, which I do think it is, but if it was more accessible, which I don't think it is. Mm -hmm. And so a comic book series that's basically Magic the Gathering that starts at Revised and Legends, which is like the oldest magic set, and kind of carries you all the way up into the modern day so that you're caught up on all of that and then you can start doing all of these side stories about all of these characters but all of the comic books always just seem to be stories of those side characters. Mm-hmm. And it's like, but then you're asking them to already know about the main story. And it's like, no, let's get a really good definitive telling of that main story so that you can go back and do a little branch of like, oh, I want to tell the story of that dude who was a little part over there. But they seem to just like the the last batch of comic books was just one of the main characters when she was doing other stuff not important to the sets. And I'm like, "Ah, then you're only going to sell this to people who are huge fans of that specific character and care about lore. And that's just such a tiny slice of your own pie. Like, aim at the bigger slice of the pie. Like, it's not crazy to say that. Like, that would, that's what I would like to see from a a magic uh, comic. So that would be good. Uh, I think Robert could do that. I hopefully he gets it. Uh, the thing the I was going to s- think it's yeah. kind of likely is because since he has done so well with GI Joe and Transformers, same people that own GI Joe and Transformers own Magic. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> so it's less of a contract, less of a conversation. They're like, oh, we've seen that you've already done a great job with this. Let's give you this too. Um, whereas my other more pie in the sky request would be to have him do Star Trek because I am a huge Trekkie and none of the comic books have ever really <laughs> me and he seems I would have right said now. the same thing I would have said the same thing about Transformers but he's managed to just make it my favorite comic book and so I would love to see that whatever magic he, he rubs into Transformers I would love to see him do that with Star Trek like go back to the real core characters not necessarily hamper down with a ton of continuity and tell some great stories that just can really grab anybody. Who's doing the Star Trek comics right now? Is it IDW? Yeah. Or boom. And it's it's but it's like hard line tied to the continuity of like the shows. Hmm. And Oh, again, it's one of I've those seen all the shows, so it's anything that so it's, but it uh... just it to me it makes it so that they're handicapped in terms of trying to sit to, to tell a big new story like they have to be able to kind of do a little bit of their own thing and like in the transformers universe we're already seeing like characters die 
And like they're robots, so they could be rebuilt. So I guess that gives them a little bit more leeway inside that universe. But like they've switched sides on a couple of the good guys and bad guys from GI Joe, and, and they they've been allowed to do a little bit of changing to the story. Whereas with Star Trek, it seems like they are just not allowed to change. Anything. Well, but I hate uh, comic books, especially when they take these big IPs like some of the Star Wars comics. I hate it when they were doing the Mandalorian. I was like, oh, cool, Mandalorian comic. But it's literally uh, episode per episode per issue. And I'm like, this is stupid. I've watched the show. Why do I want to read yeah, the just comic? just an adaptation. I don't need an adaptation. That's I not don't need that. I don't need that. So to your point, uh, IDW is doing Star Trek. And it would be cool if Robert could grab that because he's like, hey, look, I'm grabbing all these other IPs from you guys. You want to sell this one my way? Well, like, um, if, that, if that is why he's so successful with Transformers and G.I. Joe is his ability to handle IP, then I just want him to get more IP because he's really managed to hit it out of the park with both of these. And while Transformers, I was certainly in the bag for, G.I. Joe, I was not. And I'm really excited to to read more of those villain series and that's 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 probably the best review i can give of any of it because mm-hmm. like i said for transformers just had to be a little bit good and i would have gotten excited but it's great so i'm very excited but gi joe had to work a little uphill for me to get on board and it really grabbed me and dragged me along for the ride so i'm really i would really love to see that energy that he put into that universe uh, go into a couple other IPs that really deserve that level of love. Yeah, I was going to say, I hope he could, it'd be cool if he get He-Man, but I think, was He-Man Mattel? He-Man is Mattel. Okay, mean but can't. isn't it Hasbro but, Mattel, though? I thought it was Hasbro Mattel. No, Mattel is different no, than Hasbro because that's different. Barbie okay. and and that's right that's right that's right because i think it would be cool if we could do a he-man comic like a more uh violent he-man that'd be sweet to me like kind of a goofy conan where this like the he-man universe is so weird but if you yeah. could take a more uh violent direction i'd be like whoa look at this that's pretty cool yeah like that's what they're doing with transformers and ghl like exactly telling the story that are kind of that's that's a love letter to that original stuff, but they're also growing the story up just like the fans have grown up. And yeah, that, I think that, that could absolutely be a killer. That's what I would want, you know, these old 30, 40 year old IPs, hell, even G.I. Joe's even older than that. And if they could make these more uh, violent stories, at least more adult oriented stories for the people that are actually reading this and yeah. the people that still buy a majority of the toys are the people who grew up watching this, you know, yeah. <laughs> like well, those I think we're about to get a, watching the cartoons and everything, too. I think we're about to get a new generation of Transformers fans because we've got the new Transformers one. Uh, Transformers one. I was going to say that. that I am very, very excited about. Uh, uh, it looks cool. like it's very much uh, directed at kids. It's got some good humor to it. I can't wait to take my daughter to go see that one. Yeah, it definitely looks good. Um, but, let's let's see. Anything else you want to add to this? My take was He Man and Magic. Uh, yeah. You want Star Trek and Magic? What else do you think we could pop into this uh, Robert Kirkman IP <laughs> universe? <laughs> Just letting Robert Kirkman fix previously broken IPs. Um, Give him a Batman book. How cool would that be? I mean, Kirkman just starting over with Batman, kind of allowing to tell his own story. Yeah, That'd be sweet. I'm sure he would do a very good job. It'd be yeah. interesting to have him do like, but you'd have to give him the reins to do something like Invincible, where he's allowed yeah. to kind of change and move the story where he wants to move it because one of the great things about Invincible is that he was allowed to do kind of whatever he wanted in that story. And so there were there was, uh, quite a few moments where you're like, wait, what? And he's not going to be allowed to do that with certain IPs. Oh, if, yeah. If any yeah. of them. And so him being able to work within the rules or also just figuring out what rules he was given because it seems like with the G.I. Joe and Transformers, he's been given a long leash to kind of do what yeah. he wants. Yeah. 
especially with adding void rivals into it and making that all one canon universe where this is like a completely new thing so i think he's doing a good job with those books um i am Yes. Excited to see what else he could get. Really, the most realistic one out of all our wish list is Magic. Hopefully, yeah. he can pick that up. I had, is there anything else you want to close out with, Jeff? I think we had a pretty good. I'm sorry, I've been out of it. I mean, I'm pretty tired. No, you've been partying. <laughs> so I think we've uh, hit everything pretty well. You know, is there anything yeah. else you want to plug? Uh, no, not yet. My show still hasn't been edited together yet, so I can't direct you. It's going to be the Jeffrey's Comics Grail. So there we go. go. Look, look that up, and maybe there'll be stuff waiting for you. But hopefully, by the next episode, we'll have a few of my other show done so we can show off that one too. And uh, say if it does get put out next few weeks or so, I can always add those links to the description down Great. below. So they'll be in this if the. Look, come back to this video in a few weeks. If it's back here or whatever you're stumbling upon it, if you see links down below to his new show, we'll direct you there. So, until everybody, uh, uh, until next time, everybody, stay tuned for episode three. Enjoy your comics this month. Make sure you go support your local comic book stores for free comic book day. And let us know what you're reading in the comments. And still, I said I was going to give away one issue from the Energon universe, and nobody's taken me up on that in the comments for the last video. So that offer is still there if you guys want free comics. <laughs> you know? But till next time, everybody. Take it easy. Have a good one, guys.